Hello and welcome to Skeindy Knits. My name is Ellie and I am a Norwegian knitting and living in London and you can find me on Instagram and everywhere else as Skeindy. And I have a Ravelry shop Skeindy Knits which you know you can buy my knitting patterns and make knitting patterns. And <laughs> is there an echo here? I feel like there's an echo here. There is an echo here isn't it? So for new viewers this is where I normally sit and talk about knitting and my knitting designs about once a month. But I'm in a period of transition with my life and so I'm gonna basically reverse my usual podcast content by talking about the personal stuff first and then we get into the knitting because I feel like during this period I guess I'm speaking more to the little sort of skein in its community that we've kind of built up here over the years and yeah something's different. It's the same room don't don't get too excited it, you, you know this is the same setup we've had since 2016 uh but a few things have changed yes most of my things are out of here in boxes downstairs that's how far i got uh so for a bit of context for those who are wondering what was she on about i am moving and nothing's gone according to plan the very optimistic estimate i had was that i could move in december because i there's really very few barriers in the way uh, it's a pretty straightforward purchase however <laughs> We're dealing with an incredibly slow freeholder and I'll just keep to that. We're just waiting a month for them to respond with the simplest inquiry. So that's why, that's why Ellie's still here. And I have spoken a bit about this on my Vlogmas series, but I understand maybe not everyone's been watching that. Though, why wouldn't you? It's such a... <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that. It's a little bit boring, but it's nice, nice boring, you know. So I realised just before Christmas break that I wasn't going to be able to move then. So I really thought... I was going to be able to move as soon as my conveyancers are back in their office I can finish up this job on the 2nd of January. Which did not happen because they had more questions for the notoriously slow to respond freeholders. And that's why I'm still here. Um, and they have sometimes an 8, sometimes a 10 working day reply policy. Which isn't going to work because I have to be out of here in two days. Because in two days... There will no longer be a bathroom to use because my landlord wants to renovate and uproot anything that is plumbing. So yes, in two days I need to have somewhere else to live that isn't my next place and isn't this place. Wonderful. I'm freaking out. Uh, I have a few tentative solutions, a little bit here and there, sleeping on people's sofas and whatnot. Uh, I don't quite know what to do with my things. There's indoor furniture, outdoor furniture, there's plants, out indoor, outdoor. Uh, it's really not ideal and I am kind of panicking and I don't know what to do. And <laughs> isn't this exciting? But I think what I will do is once actually this move has been properly initiated and I get to actually move into the new place. I think I want to do some kind of vlog for that. I think that'll be nice. I probably won't be able to put it on like on a day-to-day -day basis like Vlogmas. Not that I really do that with Vlogmas either. <laughs> but you know, I I think that'll be fun. Because uh, I wanted to do that for Vlogmas. That's kind of what I said I would. And then, you know, you know here we are. Uh, the other thing you may notice is the setup here is a bit weird. This is the same setup. It's just that my camera is in for repair and it's gonna cost a lot for them to do a slight little fix, a little small thing. I think I may just have chosen the wrong place, but they have my camera now, so I've gotta go through with it. So we're dealing with my handheld camera. Unfortunately, the thing that attaches it to the tripod is somehow gone. I don't know where it is. So it's just sitting on top of there, which is why the angle is so weird and I can't sit up any higher. So it's just all a little bit off. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, I can joke about the situation, but it is honestly like really stressful, like affecting my like sleep and eating and whatnot. So I had a number of very, 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 very kind people, like a lot of people uh, in the Vlogmas episodes that I've been talking about this, asking me why have I not put up a coffee link? You know, coffee, which is sort of like, hey, buy me a cup of coffee because I make online content for free. Uh, it's kind of how that works. You can kind of give as much as you want for, online creators to make their content accessible for everyone and make the content full stop. And why haven't I done that? Well, I have now, that's a short answer link down below, but I will talk a little bit about my thoughts around this because I feel weird asking for money. <laughs> so, okay, a couple of reasons why I hadn't done it until now. One is that you can actually just buy a pattern of mine, you know? You could just buy a pattern, then you get a product and it's easy for my accountant to file and it's pretty straightforward. That, that, that'd be nice, regardless. 
what you choose to do. If you have bought a pattern from mine before, you're like, I'm, I'm all good, got the patterns I want. You will still have my PayPal details. You can actually send money via PayPal too. So I'll link to all these three options at the very top of the video description. I might do a pinned comment as well if people can't find it. But I feel weird about it. And I'll talk a little bit about why. Because uh, you'll see this online. Like if you follow anyone online, you'll see at some point people will be asking the followers for money. And I don't feel like that is a bad thing, but I do feel like I do not want to misuse my position as someone who has a lot of following which is a huge privilege and I, I feel like you can only ring that bell once you know and there has been times in my past where I thought about it I for instance one incident that came, come, <laughs> came to mind now is when I really struggled to get a proper assessment from the NHS they weren't using honestly they were going by research that is older than I am and I needed to be properly properly assessed and they were just refusing to do it basically and I had to go private and it cost me a lot of money plus travel and accommodation for the place I had to go to and I thought should I nobody should have to pay for these things like this this should be free uh maybe like should I ask my followers for this because it's just so much money but at the end of the day I was just like you know it is a personal thing it's something that this happened in like the one year that I like made slightly more than I needed at the time. Uh, so I, I could use what I had and I, I chose that and I just kind of carried on. Because uh, I really think like, you could probably only do that once, you know? The the big like, followers, they'll follow us, uh, Ali needs money. Uh, if you keep doing it several times, you end up becoming the boy who cried wolf, even if it's legit, because life is hard and it's hard for so many of us. I don't take it for granted, the position that I have, and I don't want to misuse it. And I understand that a lot of people are probably not able to give a single pound slash dollar slash euro, whatever you are. Uh, but however, those of you who can do that, I mean, looking at the norm normal view count my videos get, if everyone did send just one pound slash dollar slash euro, I'll be fine. Like That's it. I'll be set. That, that will probably solve the expenses that I might incur. And that leads me to, well... <laughs> The third reason I was hesitant about putting up any links for donation is that I don't know what for. <laughs> because there's so much uncertainty, there is a chance that I may not need to spend anything extra than what I estimated. That's, that's getting slimmer and slimmer now. I think I definitely will have to. But that could happen and then I'm just sitting here with money people gave me that didn't come to use. If that happens, I think I'll just put that into this game day business and content and but chances are I will need that money <laughs> to be fair that's where I've arrived at and yeah so I think that's also why I changed my mind a bit it's just, just looking like I I generally might need it um it's an issue of you know transporting my things to the new place is something I can cover for sure I it's now maybe the case that I may have to trans port these things to a storage when all the things can go to storage they may need to be transported elsewhere but I don't know where and that's a lot of drives with big vehicles back and forth that is just gonna accumulate to a lot a lot I, I feel really awkward about this if you can't tell but I I did have just so many of you guys kindly you know urging me to to put up donation links so yes I have done that now I oh my god I am like the most Norwegian person on the planet the way I'm like so afraid of asking for help like this is like culturally a thing <laughs> okay I feel like it's, a, it's maybe it's just a trendy thing maybe it's just like my neck of the woods I don't know is it a woman thing hmm. but yeah here we are uh I think I've said everything I need to say about that I do have to be out of here in two days and it's looking like I may just have to stay at our friend's sofa for at least a while. <laughs> um, so yeah, I really wanted to cram in a podcast episode before that. Even though this room is so empty right now, there's just a lot of echo, there's nothing on the walls. It is also so cold. It is so cold. 16 degrees, it says on my thermometer. It's 16.0, so it's gonna go under 16 very, very, any minute now. This flat is bigger than I need it to be. It's a flat share flat, right? So there's no point in me heating up the entire space. I'm really just sticking to heating up the living room and my room. However, the thermostat is in the living room, so it's gonna stop putting on the heat there when that room is warm enough. And that room has two radiators, this one has one. I don't know why I'm telling you this, you don't need to know this, but it just means that in half the time it will heat up the living room where the thermostat is and it will switch off and this room is just like, but I am only 15. <laughs> so 
yeah, that's that's where we're at. Do you guys want to talk about knitting now? That, I kind of like this camera. Am I? Should I just stop using my DSLR? This is like kind of fine. We can actually fit in more knitwear in this frame. But yeah, in case it wasn't obvious before I get to the knitting, I will probably not be able to make content for a while. Not only will my camera be packed away, I'll be staying at other people's places. Thank goodness for the knitting community. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> I would not be anywhere right now if it weren't for knitters that I know. I will not be able to record from there. You know, that's just a given. I have my camera in for repair. I don't even know where the rest of my equipment is. And my desktop computer where I edit videos is going to have to be packed away. So I'll just be on my laptop, which can do it. It's just a little bit weak. A little bit, little bit weak, getting a little bit old. Uh, so I think for the time being, we're going to rely on the newsletter and Instagram. I need to be better at both. I know, I know. So yeah. Subscribe to our newsletter, please. <laughs> okay, finally, let's get talking about knitting because I have been knitting. That's kind of how you stay reasonably grounded and at least having some nice things when these things are going on. And we ha there has been a Christmas break. So of course I have to knit something festive. Viewers of my Vlogmas will already know what this is, of course. It is the festive yoke card again, my very own pattern. Have I not knit knitted this before? Yes, I have. I had to make a sample, obviously, but <laughs> I don't think I ever cut up the sticks. I've never done the final photo shoot. And I guess I thought I was going to do that this year with like Christmas trees and everything. But I didn't really have any decor up because of the aforementioned situation. So I just started a new one that I wanted to make because one, a test knitter of mine basically made this exact version. And I was like, oh, I want it. I want exactly that version and I happen to be sat with exactly this yarn. Now this is a slightly different red than what she used. It's a slightly different grey too, but the grey is pretty close. The red is a little bit pinker than the more sort of warmer red that she used that I did really, really want because it was more burgundy, whereas this is more of a... It's another burgundy, okay? <laughs> and at the end of the day, I just realised this is going to be fine and this is the yarn that I have and it's the same yarn. It's Usk by Hillisborg. One of my favourite yarns. It's like top three, if not number one. It's, it's so good. I'm never unhappy with what I make with this yarn. It's just magical. You may be able to tell it's not blocked at all. It's very like scrunched up where all the rib is. This is where blocking matters even for ribbon stocking it guys. Uh, it, it's just and it makes it look very round and kind of odd. Um, the other thing about this is I wanted to make it like very nice and big. So if you look at the pattern it's not a lot of ease recommended. You can have zero ease or just maybe like an inch or two but generally it's not a very oversized fit. But I want it. I want it to be bigger this time because I don't know, like I've, I've been leaning towards that a lot lately and something about, I think about that like the cabin cardigan, you know, like Norwegians have their mountain cabins and there will be a cardigan or two there and it is so big that anyone and any member can wear it and so it will be oversized for a lot of members of the family and that's like the vibe that I want sometimes. So that's, that's, that's where it's at. Hmm. Oh, I love this. I've worn this a lot and it's kept me very warm. Because uh, we all know I needed that. It's just not. Uh, being alone with the gas and electricity bill. Oh yeah, that happened too. I don't know. I did talk about that last time. My flatmate kind of managed to thread her way out of here. And I got to stay over on my own. Which has been lovely. Uh, one less thing to be stressed about. But... Paying for gas and electricity alone for such a large space isn't something I felt very up to, so that's why I am just a bit uncharacteristically stingy with the heating. Which is not good because it makes the humidity really high and that is not healthy, it's not good for the home. I'm just saying, heat up your homes, people. If you can. I we, Clearly a lot of us can't. Cause... And I'm also like not complaining about, like, I'm digressing a lot today. <laughs> I'm not complaining about the coldness of winter. That is winter. Winter's gonna winter. And I think winter's great. Uh, a little bit too dark for my taste, but winter's great. Love, love cold weather. I just don't want it to be cold inside and I don't think it should be this expensive to heat up our homes. That's what I'm upset about. Anyway, I don't have buttons on yet because I kind of guess though I would block it first, which I haven't, and my buttons are packed. Shocking. <laughs> so, no buttons yet, but that's fine. I've just been like wearing it over my shoulders. Maybe we should just do that. How about that? This isn't like the easiest thing to model knitwear with because it's just like a very dropped shoulder kind of dress that I love and I have four colors of it. But it can wear this because of its oversized fit. And I might just keep it on. 
because I'm cold. Did I mention that? But yeah, I really like it. I obviously no modification. It's kind of my passion. I've already decided as I like it. Um, yeah, that's that's that. Oh, modification, I guess. I rearranged the chart a little bit. There's supposed to be another kind of like Norwegian star type pattern here, a slightly different one. But I, I, yeah, my test knitter did do this instead. And that's exactly what the pattern is supposed to be. You know, it's not a modification, it's supposed to be. You can rearrange the chart however you like and you can add from the chart appendix in the back. Uh, there's like lots of charts to choose from, snowmen and Christmas parcels and all, all kinds of things, so yeah. I am really happy that I have it and I am already thinking about making another pullover. I know, maybe I'll do it next year because I had someone on Instagram tag me where they had made, I think two navy blue yoke only festive pullovers. And it was just so nice. It was just color work up here in white and the rest was navy blue. And you guys know how I feel about navy blue, right? So, I might do another one and that'll be really nice as well because then I will have a sample for all four variations the yoke only color work cardigan and pullover and what I already have the color work all over cardigan and pullover ah oh, that was a mouthful so that'd be good for me as a designer and like I don't know reasons I never thought I would but I just I, I enjoy this pattern if I may tweak my own horn a little bit I will say that oh god is the sun coming out I can't. <laughs> I have nothing to shield myself. If I get the sun in my eyes, that's just what the episode's going to be like. So let's move swiftly along to another finished object. As viewers on my podcast will have seen, uh, my mum sent me some yarn uh, on request because I wanted some yarn from Norway. That is a cotton merino blend. Now there's two companies that make these. It's either Sunness that make Duo or it's Dale that make Letke and they're pretty much indistinguishable. And both lately have a very disappointing color palette. It was not really my colors, but they did have navy blue. So I just left it for my mom to decide which of these two navy blue she was gonna send me. And she picked Dale Letke and I've already finished the jumper, which is Isolde Teague's any day sweater, any day pullover or something like that um but this is any day something <laughs> i should really remember things more but it's really nice like look at this neckline thing this is just like a twisted stitch and you guys know i am all about twisted stitches lately it's a slightly similar vibe to the pull worth the bias older that i knitted a while back but it's a completely different construction and i really like it i so it has the shoulder seams kind of like at the back. They're not on top of the shoulders, they're just sitting at the back. This is the English tailoring method. One that I've actually yet to design with myself, but I have now knitted it twice, both from Risolda's, um, the Any Day sweater and the Gule, Gule Tank. Good pronunciation, not my strong suit, but there you go. I have done both those and yeah. I've also done something quite similar by Elizabeth Dorothy that I'm blanking on the name but you can find it in my Ravelry projects. And it's just a really fun construction. I just love trying different constructions. It's shocking, I know. And it's sort of like becoming a mix of a drop shoulder or a satin sleeve because it has some shaping here, but not a lot. So it still drops over the shoulder. But there's some short rows here just to make it a little bit curve over the shoulders. Uh, just this eye to detail that just, mm, you know? So that's, yeah. I may have made it a little bit longer than my usual preference, but that may have just been inspired by the, the cold around here. <laughs> so yeah, I like how long the sleeves are and they're quite big. If you look at this, that's a wide sleeve all the way down here, but I've, been, I've got very into that lately as well. I don't, I used to do this a lot. I don't know if I just thought about like saving yarn or knitting as quickly as possible, but I used to just like have it super, super tapered all the way here. And as you can see, I've kind of just moved away from that myself as well. I just want a little bit more space here. Sometimes I'll even do a decrease around here if, it, if, it's, if it's top down, if it's cuff up and increase around here, just a little bit, which wasn't something I liked before. I, I would just really do now. <laughs> 10 out of 10 for this one. I think it's great. I enjoy it. Uh, it was surprisingly quick, though that may have been more to do with my <laughs> predicament. Uh, but yeah, it's DK, uh, light DK, I would say. You work quite a bit flat until you join at the underarm and then everything is in the round. You pick up for the neckline, which I just somewhere halfway through, and uh, yeah. I feel like, is this showing up or is it just looking really dark? No, it's, it's looking blue. 
At least I can fit in within the frame. This is very nice. I'm, I could get used to this. Maybe I should just have stuck to this camera. <sighs> the light's not helping though. But yeah, I, I really don't have any notes. <laughs> it's good. I can recommend it. I enjoyed it. I really look forward to having a cotton merino blend jumper in my wardrobe for something that isn't super, super hot, but definitely soft next to skin. And it's still gonna keep me warm. It's just checking a lot of boxes for me. And they'll, yeah. It's just gonna go right in my suitcase with all my other clothes because <laughs> everything is in suitcases now on the floor. Nothing's in the wardrobe anymore. I just wanted to have everything as close to packed and ready to go in the event that I have to just leave on short notice, which it turns out that I do. And I have too much stuff, guys. I just have way too much stuff. <sighs> I think what I've gone through obviously a lot of it whilst I've been packing, but I'm just bringing a lot of the things that I find hard to make decisions about when I'm here. So I'll have to make another round of decisions when I'm there where I will know whether I actually have a place to store these things or if I actually have to, you know, make some tough calls about some of my belongings. Oh my god, why is the sun doing this? Doesn't this take you back to the old podcast days? This is a frequent complaint from me. Only me, nobody else complained. Uh, <laughs> the last finished object that I have is these West Yorkshire Spinners sparkling socks. And I'm really hoping the sun can like work to my benefit here. So you can see just how sparkly these are. They are more sparkly than they have any right to be. That is, this is so much sparkle. This is way more than your usual Selena hand dyed socks. This is like at least twice as much as my little shorter heel with a little gusset just to get a little bit more stitches in there. I've talked about this before. I just tend to increase about a stitch on each side of the heel every other round total of four times so I have eight extra stitches. I'm just gonna sit here with this bit of shade <laughs> and then I get a slightly bigger heel and that's all I need. I have a very very low arch. My feet are flat as pancakes so you may need to do more of that if you have a higher arch but this is a great way to make shorter heels work with anyone who has any type of arch. Um, yeah so I got these two. I think I'm actually like I don't know what happened but I used to have to measure 21 centimeters between where the toe starts and the heel starts. So right between here used to be 21 centimeters. Apparently it's now 20 because I think these are a little bit long and I made the second pair which we'll get to in the in the whips and I tried them on at 21 and I was like I think we can cut down a centimeter here and I tried these and I'm like they are a little bit long. So that's new. Not sure how to feel about that but yeah. It's a pair of socks. I, I, I've talked about this before and I might as well be talking because I can't show you anything when we're in this situation. I was never much of a sock knitter. <coughs> and back when I joined knitting YouTube, I didn't really get like why we would just knit self-striping socks until I was in this situation. And it's just been very stressful and it's like a really nice way to just knit without thinking. Is it still recording? Okay. I can't see anything right now. <laughs> I get it now, is what I'm trying to say. But I'm, what I don't get is I become a sock knitter. <sighs> I generally can't see. But I don't have any other time to record. There's two days left. I'm seeing some more clouds. I'm gonna wait for those. This cloud is being slow on purpose, isn't it? All right, a new cloud has come in. I still kind of can't see anything. I think that's just my pupils that I need to like, dilate or something. But I thought we could talk about my work in progress, which is my other very sparkly West Yorkshire Spinner sock in another Christmas colorway of theirs. And I hear I'm doing actually the heel flap and gusset, which is my heel flap and gusset. It is a very short heel flap with a half a shorter heel for the heel. And this is like the most heel shaped heel I've ever made in knitting. I love this one because it snaps to the back of the heel, still plenty of space for under the heel, and it just sits, it just sits. And it's very good for me who doesn't have like the highest arch in the world, but you can definitely make it for higher arches by making the flap a bit longer so you can pick up more stitches and have a bigger gusset. Can't tell you how much, but like, you know, that's how I would go on doing that. So yeah, otherwise it's pretty much the same way. Here's when I realized like, I don't need my socks to be as long as I normally did. And I don't know what's happening because this is, like, it's not like the first time I'm making this heel. So I, I, I don't know, I don't know what's happening there. But yeah, I've got another sock left to go. And I, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to make sure I have some knitting projects 
on the go and with me now that I'm not going to be here. I'm not going to be here with my Swift and Winder and everything. So, and my stash is going to be here while I'm elsewhere. So kind of preparing in the way that you prepare for going away, right? So I'm now knitting on my sock yarn. So that's clearly out of the question. So now I kind of only have one project on the go that I will be taking with me. It's a bit, a bit risky. Uh, given how quick I knit and finish things these days. What a problem to have. Oh my god, is this cloud not gonna work? <laughs> well, this may come in handy because the next project I'll be showing you guys is going to be very dark, so you might need that light. And that is the Piping Hot Sweater by Lily Kate. It was Lily Kate Makes. She also has a YouTube channel and... Okay. I really thought that cloud was gonna last us a lot longer than it did. Mm. Okay. I don't think this is helping, but this is the piping hot sweater. <laughs> and you guys might be noticing something uh, quite different from the original, which has pipes. It has a mixture of eye cord and intarsia that are running along the shoulder, down the sleeves on each sleeve, and along the front, center front, and center back. Guess what? My camera had to shut down because it was getting too hot and I had to cool down. It's 15 degrees! Uh, the, I know the sun is technically here, but this is why I have to stick to my DSLR, I guess. That's that's how we know now, so... <laughs> anyway, where were we? The Piping Hot Sweater by Lily Kate. I am really, really enjoying this. This is such a fun construction because you're starting off with these saddle shoulder bits that you're making this way uh but yeah so you get these on each side and there's a little flap here that you're gonna like fold later and that'll be like part of the neckline uh this is better seen in her own you know pattern photos uh, i've done the back of the neck already so that one's here and all of this is gonna be like kind of stitched together tucked in and i need to do the front neck reason i haven't done the front neck yet is depending on how much yarn i'll have left i might cardiganify this but this <laughs> Takes us back to why have I not done the eye cord pipes? Why have I left them out? Why? Because I wound up a perfectly sized little blue ball of yarn that is the exact same yarn as this, which is Lamamure. It's beautifully soft, dark brown, technically black Shetland wool. It's so soft. Every time I look at this, I'm like, oh, it's going to be too itchy because it looks like it would be, but it isn't. This is so, so lovely. It's so lovely. But I think I would like it as a card again, but that's, that's to be determined. However, why didn't I do the pipes? If I had the same yarn in a contrast color in the exact amount that I have no other plans for, that would work really well with brown, like blue and brown, very nice combinations. I just didn't feel like it. It would have looked really cool. I think that was like the coolest part of this jumper. I mean, I think maybe the construction is the coolest part, but I just, at the end of the day, I was craving simple stock in there. I didn't want to intarsify the whole, thing. I wound up like four different equal sizes of it because there's four different spots that you do do the the eye cords it was just a process i wasn't feeling in the moment when i was being so stressed out i wanted most things simple even though obviously this new construction method to me has been fun uh, it does have some similarities actually with um these other sweaters that i mentioned the any day and that uh elizabeth dorothy pattern i can't remember the name of uh that they have yes it's a drop shoulder but it does have some shaping from uh set in sleeves and some shorter shaping for the shoulder cap so that yeah it fits just really nice it's just like this it detail that i just keep going on and on about so where we're at now is that i have done the front and the back for the yoke not a round yoke but just a yoke yoke set in sleeve drop shoulder yoke if you will and got to the underarm where i ran off this first skein and then i used the second skein for the sleeve i'm now just looking at it feeling like it might be a little bit short now the reason why it is that short is because of the drop of the shoulder and the extra ease that just means it's gonna sit lower you don't need as long of a sleeve length makes sense i just wonder if i maybe need more sleeve length after all because have a way of like tucking on my jumper under my arm somehow i don't know how i do that but i will have to try it on and find out i don't know how easy it's gonna be to try on over the dress i'm wearing because it's so big uh but we can try why not we have terrible light anyway so might as well just do terrible things uh <laughs> That was very dramatic. Uh, okay, let's just do this. Should be pretty straightforward because, well, there's not a whole lot of jumper yet. <laughs> oh God, I'm gonna drop some needles now, aren't I? Stitches, I mean. I feel like I'm gonna drop stitches and I'm gonna ruin everything. Okay, now that I'm having it on, I think I'm right. 
I think I need more length. Like a lot. Grr. Why? It might just be that it's not dropping because it's still in the needles, even though it's now two needles. But I think I want more, knowing myself. This is like, some people like this length. Some people think this length is perfect. I'm like here, right? I'm doing this. I mean, it's so hard to tell when it's still on the needles. That's just it, because if it drops this much, I'm just gonna lift it. We're just gonna think about it. We can continue doing the body and then we'll find out. I didn't. I did not. It's still all there. But yeah, I can definitely recommend this pattern. I, it, I'm having a lot of fun with it. It's uh, just very funny to me <laughs> that I'm taking out the single like most defining design characteristic of it, which is the pipes, which is just brilliant the way it's done. And it's just so striking. Not only that, but it's such a happy, colorful jumper. I did even get to see in person when I met Lily Kay at uh, Yarndale this autumn. And I'm just going away from all of it. And I'm just making it in this like blandest color in the world that I do think is very nice. But um, yeah, but you're supposed to do that with when you knit other people's designs. Like you make it your own with the color choices that you choose, the modifications that you put in. Like, I think this is great, but I have to laugh at myself for the choices I have made here because having a super like popping, cause hair everywhere, colorful pullover would have actually been really lovely. I, this is just the yarn that I had that seemed to fit the bill the most and even when I had the contrast yarn, I just didn't do it. <laughs> At the end of the day, you know, I'm going to be using this a lot. It's going to keep me warm. That's that's what matters. I feel like I'm just scratching that knitting itch and that's, that's you know, yeah, 10 out of 10. I'm, I'm having fun with it. Uh, would recommend, would definitely recommend in more of the colours that it was designed with, but you know, here we are. I guess that leads us back to live stuff. And I think I just want to wrap up with a bit of a just general thank you from people who have, you know, shown their support and concern and interest and just, yeah, especially to everyone who has offered to help out and the people who are helping out and just also the people who are just letting me like talk to them about all the anxiety that I have around this. It's, it's really helped. I've, you know, back when I first moved to London, I was in a sort of similar but different situation. Great, now the light is perfect. <laughs> uh, I can see again. Ooh. After my first year in London, it's that first year I live in student halls. Uh, by the way, the knitting is over. If anyone just came up for knitting, it's over, it's gone. I, you know. Uh, but yeah, I lived in student halls and they would not let us stay over the summer and they would not, you know, Keep our things they were just like you know when you're out you're out you gotta have your things elsewhere and i was like where is elsewhere um so it would have made sense for me to look for a new flat however the way that the rental market works in london you can't look for a flat three months before you need it right and that's pretty much how long the summer break is between so i had to put all my things in storage and go back to norway for months and when i came back i had nowhere to live my things were in storage there was nothing i can do and at the time i didn't know anyone I could stay with. The only friend I had I made in the first year, we had a falling out. I was pretty bleak. And so I had to take into a hostel and just the whole conditions around the hostel, so many people in that room. And just like how I had to sit in the sofa in the common room and just refresh the Wi-Fi every hour because you'd have to go back to the machine and get a new code every hour. I was just looking for property on Gumtree that I could maybe afford. And it was just so, just crap. It's just, I hated it. It was, it's just a situation I never wanted to be in again. And this is in many ways so different to that because of the support that I've had from the native community. And I just can't overstate that. So yeah, thanks to, to everyone. Um, I still don't know what's going to happen. Uh, I feel like <laughs> it may have been a mistake to start off this episode trying to say something coherent about the situation because it isn't a coherent situation to be fair. Like, I'm in a better situation with my landlady right now. Like she was here this morning and just like, you know, it's, it's we're on good terms, but like she can only extend so much to me. And so me having to leave on Monday isn't necessarily that she's the big bad, it's that I really thought I would be out of here by Monday and there are plumbers coming. I, I, I need to have a bathroom in order to live here, right? So yeah, but after these, that little grace period is over, I, I really, <laughs> I don't know what to do. So I do appreciate everyone who's uh, 
kicking me up the butt to put up donation links because I wouldn't have otherwise. I'd be too, uh, yeah, feeling too awkward about it. Yeah, uh, I feel like there's gonna be some stuff that I like forgot to mention and then I have to wrap up this episode and I'm, look at the, the perfect light right now. It's so good. So I just wanted to wrap that up. We're just saying just a massive, massive thank you. One way or the other, I'm gonna get to the other side of this and we're gonna look back at this and laugh because if you can't laugh, then what can you do, you know? So we're gonna do that. And it's gonna be great uh, when, when we get there. And I can't wait to show you. Catch you later. And thanks for watching. Bye. -bye.